Right, a warm welcome from X Solutions here in South Africa. We are very excited today to launch the first episode of a brand new series called Fix Ed. It's a unique name, but it'll make it easy for you to uh, Google it, to lock down on it on YouTube, and subscribe. So just bear with me on the name. Uh, the main goal of this whole series is to give you five to ten minutes of entertainment just showing you some of the workflow and features and approaches that we use in Midas NFX so sit back and relax hope you enjoy this right so somebody phones you they're sending you geometry it's a Nastran deck and upon opening it you see it's the absolute minimum amount of information so I'm gonna have to construct some geometry around this I'm just defining a work plane for me, which I can come back to every time. Um, selecting the corner nodes of that mesh, and I save it there as a deck. You can see if, if I switch on that one, look at it. Yep, it comes back, and that is what we want to use. So, quickly going to pick up those corner nodes, and I'm just creating now geometry on that plane. I'm calling deck, and just uh, jumping from node to node. I'm going to use the uh, three-point circle construction, grabbing the notes on the inside there, and just some basic uh, lines again to um, make it more easier for me. So switching off the, the the nodes, you can see I can just concentrate on the geometry. Right. So what I'll do is I'll grab the lines. We'll switch off the the nodes and we'll continue with some line construction from the center to the center of that line the intersection to the end of that line so I delete my construction line and then I've got my um, very important point that I can construct my circle to which would be the fixture points that me and the client has now uh, decided upon I'm going to make a 25mm um, wireframe over there and this is going to be um, holes. I need uh, six of them at the end of the day. And this is where we're going to attach this plane. So I'm just going to continue to quickly extrude that center pipe section of us. It's going to be 75 mils. I'm taking the solid off, so I sit with this shell, which is great. And then I'm just going to use that to create a 3D line from the center of the top curve to the center of the bottom curve meaning that I've got a nice rotation axis there and quickly just copy that wireframe around um, that center line give me every 60 degrees and I want five more there we go it's just a quick way to show you how to construct a center line for rotation and we're going to use this once more for some gussets but um, we'll get to that Okay, so I'm going to make a plane surface, select the boundaries there, and I'm not going to make it flat, I'm going to include the holes that I want right up front, so that I end up with this surface without doing any other work on it. And the hole there, let's just check the preview. Right, happy with that. Good. Let's uh, construct our gusset. We need six gussets that will run from that corner to that line. Again, just make a, a planar surface, selecting the boundaries, and uh, that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a 2D mesh on all of these surfaces, and I'm going to show you how we work with the extrude and offset functions to create a 3D mesh from it. I'm not concerned about the thickness of the shell that I'm creating right now. There's my um, element size. and I'm quite happy with that mesh for the pipe section. We do it for the deck. And let's make the gusset one a little bit smaller. I'm just going to punch in five there. And um, that's it. So we'll use this me these meshes now to create uh, proper 3D meshes. I'm going to use the extrude function first on the deck 
I'm just going to select that whole group and um, we can define any direction but I'll just show you I'm just going to use an axis of Z so we'll extrude into the Z direction it's a 10 mil plate and we want two elements so that's sufficient you can see it pops out to the wrong direction so we'll just add a minus there it inverts the direction and we can accept that and there you can see it has the 3D mesh as well as the one that we've used to create it, the 2D mesh still intact and you can use that for some other stuff as well so we'll do basically the same for the pipe which we want to grow a thickness to the inside I'm just going to select the positive side and it's going to be 8 mil plate again staying with my two elements on thickness okay that's the wrong direction so I'll just select the negative direction you can see it pops into the center there and we can accept that quite happy to work with it and now let's look at the gusset I'm going to use the same offset function but in this case I will treat that as a mid surface so we'll select the surface and we say that we want it to go both sides 2.5 mil on each side gives me a 5 mil plate and there's two elements on it as well I can delete the 2D meshes now finish with that or you can keep it just as you wish so let's quickly make more of these gussets I'm just going to select them and we're going to revolve them by cop do a uniform copy and grabbing that center that we created so quickly 60 degrees and we want five more and off you go and it actually created for us individual mesh groups now as you can see them set one two three four and five we could from start in just include it inside an existing mesh group I'm just accepting the defaults now right so you can see it's a little bit of a uh, offset that we have between the pipe and the deck so I want to grow the pipe into the direction of the deck with a thickness of 10 mils I'm going to do that by selecting again the extrude but this time selecting the element faces we know it's in the Z direction the plate was 10 mil thick there was two elements so we're happy just to uh, just select them again right we'll just move over and say select objects and we will grab all of these sitting at the top select objects grab them you can see that it's highlighted and we're happy with that good there's a new group being created we can work with it as is and just merge them through contact or um, we just switch on everything and get the whole picture or we can uh, just uh, merge them right here in the group so switching on all the elements you'll see the bottom one is the one that we just created and I'll just drag it right into the pipe mesh group and we sit now with one mesh entity on that side Midas NFX takes care of all the node numbering uh, degrees of freedom so we don't have to worry about that right we can work with this we must probably add some boundary conditions so let's uh, take that deck plate of ours we'll take a plan view on it and <coughs> let's just zoom in there I'm gonna create um, an element which is called a rigid body element you can see there's quite a few types of elements stick with the rigid body for this this one and I specifically ask it to create a center node from all the ones that I've selected 
So there's automatic center node creation. We can just move over and I will just uh, do these for each one of those holes. If I were to leave the apply button until the end as opposed to what I'm doing right now after every hole I would actually create one rigid body element that will tie all six of these holes together with a center node right in the middle of the six um, holes that I'm uh, currently using so we do it specifically this way to keep the independence and not introduce some additional rigidity in the system which will not be very valid for this type of sin analysis. Right, that should be the last one. And um, let's just, while we're busy with this, add the um, boundary conditions. So I'll use pinned constraints, snapping away at the centers, there we go, and that's done, so the only thing we still need to really define is the contact as well as the uh, force. Let's quickly apply the, the force as a um, nodal load, and we need about uh, 30 kilonewtons, so an intelligent choice that I made for the mesh sizes. If I were to um, just isolate that pipe and I just grab the nodes, just get my rectangle back, you'll see that we sit with 300 nodes, which means that I can get away with my 100 no um, newtons of load per node and we want a positive z direction that's fine and that's in a total load of 100 times 300 let's just construct a linear analysis quickly you can see that we've ported the boundary conditions and the loads already or already in and there's the meshes and i'll just use this secondary contact function which in this case works well just have to define what's in that group. I'll take the rigid body in the default out because there's nothing in there. Five mil tolerance, what I'm happy with, and it's a welded contact. And that's done for all the mesh groups that was in that um, in that welded contact uh, definition. We've got everything we need to run this analysis now. Let me just move this window up so that you can see the feedback from the solver. It should be enough. And uh, off we go. That's 2.13 seconds. Right, and there's the uh, deformation results. Nice and interesting picture. Um, we know that this is not going to work because the client specifically said he wants the uh, pipe to stay as round as possible and uh, we don't achieve this the gusset um, is just pressing right into it because there's no stiffness so let's add a flange to it quickly the way I'm going to do it is uh, I'm just going to select the three faces of the elements in that row on the inside of the pipe so we'll say the uh, intersect all the elements I intersect with my selection now will be valid. Quickly grab them. That means the outer and the uh, oops. Um, that's right. We don't want the 2D elements. We want the 3D element faces. So just select that quickly. Element faces. There we go. And now we'll deselect all the visible elements on the which means the outside ones. So front selection only, unselect those and we'll just turn the model around, deselect those. 
and exactly what we wanted. We will now make an offset 3D mesh using those um, selected uh, element faces and we'll grow it for 20 millimeters inside of the pipe and two and two elements wide. <coughs> All that we left to do now is to add that new mesh gr group to the analysis. I've just made a copy there to retain the other results. So we'll take that mesh in included there and also in that um, contact group select it, punch it over. Good. We can quickly run this analysis. Right, and it's done. Okay, let's just uh, get all the participating meshes back. There you go. And what I'll do to compare the two is I'm just going to switch off the mesh because there's no results for it in the first one. So the last mesh group I've created, and I'll just switch off. And we can just uh, cycle between the results for those two and um, you can see a significant difference there and also in the stresses we've got a 57 um, megapascal so let me just switch on the labels for the high and low stress values and if we look at the other one we can see that we actually got rid of that stresses in the pipe, jumps to the gases where we can monitor them closely where they should be probably and uh, there we go just want to see how that ring looks in translation and in the von Mises stresses hope you enjoyed it, thank you very much